Witness the exact body language and behavioral red flags of a psychopath. We're going to analyze the body language and behavior of known psychopaths so you can identify the shocking commonalities of how they all act. That's next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Derek Van Shake here. We've covered psychopaths quite a bit on this channel with their constant manipulation, massive egos, deception, lack of emotion, empathy, and remorse. So we're going to piece together interviews and footage of known psychopaths such as Richard Ramirez, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dimer, John Wayne Gacy, Charles Manson, Dennis Rader, and others to clearly show you the shockingly common behavior and body language of psychopaths. So you can easily see the red flags to look out for to identify a psychopath in your own life. Now, let's get started. People in this day and age are brainwashed and programmed like a computer at being nothing more than puppets. This nation, this country is founded in violence. <sighs> violent delights tend to have violent ends. What's going through my mind right now is to use the minutes and hours that I have left as fruitfully as possible. Is there enough time to explain it all? This interview with Ted Bundy was filmed the day before he was executed. And now finally he actually comes clean. For the record, you are guilty of killing many women and girls. Is yes. That yes, that's true. And starts telling the world on what they could do to prevent someone like Ted Bundy from happening again. To use the minutes and hours that I have left as fruitfully as possible and see what happens. But he's saying all this in a last ditch effort so he doesn't get executed the next day. Yeah, it's to manipulate everybody to think that, oh shoot, we can't get rid of Ted Bundy because we need so much more information from Ted Bundy so that we have more insight into the minds of someone like Ted Bundy. I don't want to die. I'm not going to kid you. I'll kid, kid you not. And that's the thing with a psychopath. As soon as you know that they're a psychopath, which is the number one rule of a psychopath is to not let you know that they are a psychopath. As soon as you know that they are a psychopath, you pretty much know all their cards because it's all extremely self-motivated. And it's not for the greater good or for the good of somebody else. It's not to help anyone else. It's just to help them and what they want in the immediate future. Now listen to Ted Bundy try to convince you and manipulate you. Listen for his comments tonality and listen to how he talks about his victims watch there is no way in the world that killing me is going to restore uh, those beautiful children to their parents and 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 correct and, and 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 soothe the pain yes he calls his victims beautiful children now those beautiful children because what he's truly trying to do is manipulate the victims families manipulate the governor so that they can either call the governor and the governor is going to have a discussion about all this and then maybe delay the the execution and postpone the execution so that ted bundy doesn't have to be executed tomorrow and some say that oh no no ted bundy's not trying to suck up or trying to manipulate anybody so he can get off of death row and won't have to be executed tomorrow <laughs> because if he wanted to get off of death row he should just plead complete innocence and oh this is a mistake a man who does not want to die does not confess to 28 murders. But at this point, everyone knew that Ted Bundy did it. There was so much evidence against Ted Bundy. So Ted Bundy knew that card couldn't be played. So in Ted's mind, his best card was to be a source of information. And you can't get rid of Ted Bundy, because if you do, you're going to lose that source of good information. <laughs> Part of the shock and horror for my dear friends and family when, years ago when I was first arrested was that they just, there was no clue. They looked at me and they looked at the, you know, the, um, the all-American boy. This is something we're going to be noticing a lot, especially with these psychopathic killers. Many of them manipulate their friends, family, and coworkers to believe that they aren't this psychopathic type of person. Specifically here, a psychopathic killer. So what ends up happening is that they live double lives. The psychopathic life of whatever they want to get, whether it's, in this case, murder, or maybe it's a Bernie Madoff scamming a whole bunch of people and not telling his friends and family of what's going on and just putting on the front in the, in the face of a true, honest, good person, but behind closed doors, they're satisfying their psychopathic desires. We just can't figure out why there's two Chris's, okay? We talked about that last night. Yes. We just can't figure it out. 
And if you recall with Chris Watts, he was extremely two-faced as well. The reason why Jeffrey Dahmer was able to get away with his crimes was because of just what you are seeing here. Jeffrey Dahmer is intelligent and articulate. That is what makes him so frightening. An unassuming chocolate factory worker. How good was Jeff at manipulating you? Excellent. He's very good. Good liar. He fooled everyone. He fooled me. Yeah, very good. He fooled his probation officer, his attorney, the, the police. The public life of John Gacy was that of a model citizen and loving father. Outwardly, Gacy maintained a life that appeared meticulously in order. I always felt that service community and community service to others, you know, in my religious background, I felt if you serve other people, it, it'll come back to serve you. The biggest excuse that he came up with is that all of the victims made him do what he did. It was the victim's fault. If they hadn't pursued him, he wouldn't have had to do to them what he did. And you may be wondering, how do you identify whether someone's two-faced or not? Contrary to some belief, you can't tell whether a psychopath is lying or not. Part of it is reading their body language and looking for incongruencies when they're talking about certain things. We'll be talking about their body language and their nonverbals a little bit later. That's what the TV reported. And not only did they report it there, they wrote it on my file. I've got it great myself. Paul Bernardo, uh, Phil Regional said Paul Bernardo lied to police about uh, crimes he didn't commit. Said he did. Okay. I, I mean, this is this that's just awful. I mean, come on. Okay. Enough manipulation. Another big red flag when someone's trying to manipulate you is that they end up calling you manipulative. They call you the very thing that they are. And the reason why they do that is because they're trying to cover for themselves, trying to not make it look like they're manipulating. So the best way to do that is to call you manipulative. So if they are seemingly proactively calling you manipulative, they're likely being manipulative so that you don't catch on to their manipulation. I would feel like totally out of control and yet I would watch him and he would seem totally in control. One of the things when I look back I realize I didn't always see him take acid. I don't think he did. Charles Manson was trying to manipulate the women in believing that he was this god. They're all seeing things and the drug didn't have any effect on Charles Manson coming across to these women that he was above it and he was even stronger than the drug that they were all experiencing. Charles Manson was like, mm, okay, I took it. <laughs> you know? Raider from a distance looked like a pillar of the community, but nobody really understood his inner life. He was able to compartmentalize his life. He could be the good father, and he could also kill, and then comes back to the Boy Scout camp as if nothing happened. He became a compliance officer, a role that gave him the chance to exercise a position of authority in the community. Dennis Rader, the president of the congregation at Christ Lutheran Church, BTK. When he wasn't actually doing his acts, he had this persona, this aura of normalty that nobody suspected that he could be a, a killer. It would be improper for me to comment on my LA convictions and on my pending case here in San Francisco. Why? Because of my appeals. Yeah, Richard Ramirez was so egotistical that he actually thought that he had a chance of not only getting off of death row, but also getting out of all the murders that he was convicted of. What's very common of psychopaths is thinking that they can do the impossible. It's because they're so egotistical. Why did you decide to defend yourself? Such as Ted Bundy thinking that he could defend himself in court. I have a lot of strong opinions about how things should be done. Because even when lawyers get in trouble, they usually hire an attorney to defend them. But some Someone who's as egotistical as Ted Bundy, he thinks he could defend himself just as well as a 20 plus year law veteran. I ought to get Mattel to make little dolls that walk and say, I hope the Bundy wants to. You think about getting out of here? Well, <laughs> well, uh, legally, sure. <laughs> jumped out of this second story window at the front of the Pitkin County Courthouse this morning. He was scheduled for a court appearance and apparently had been locked into the law library by sheriff's deputies. Throughout the many years he spent in prison, he spent much of his time painting. This is Christ as I see him in myself. Gacy did not believe he was going to die. He said, call back in an hour or two. I said, John, you're going to be dead in an hour or two. What are you thinking about? Well, God, I guess you're my best friend being I invented you. You believe in God, Charles? Sure, I believe in myself. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> what do you think it is about you that makes people want to be a part of whatever it is you're a part of? I'm brand new. Everything I do is always 
brand new. Radar wants status. Radar wants to think of himself as cleverer than other people in his community, taunting the police that they are not able to arrest him. The police were at a loss, and the taunting letters from BTK kept coming in. I think I stand about as much chance of dying in front of a firing squad or in a gas chamber as you do being killed in a plane flight home. Let's hope you don't. <laughs> do you ever feel like you'd like to escape? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't at all convinced that he was guilty. He's the most pleasant killer I've ever interviewed. A big thing back then that people just didn't want to believe about Ted Bundy was that someone so nice, generally handsome, charming, could actually have two sides to him, could actually do terrible things and be so nice and charming and, and uh, so personable during interviews. People generally want to believe that they can pick out, you know, a serial killer or a murderer and, ah, oh, you should have looked at him. Look, he looks like a serial killer. He looks like a murderer. Oh, it's so obvious. But with Ted Bundy, he wasn't like that at all. Complete opposite. He made that appearance. He created that facade of manipulation, making people think he was the all-American boy. They looked at me and they looked at the, you know, the... Um, the all-American boy. That's part of the reason why Ted Bundy got away with it for so long. You are not guilty. I'm not guilty. <laughs> He's laughing at that. I'm not guilty. <laughs> Psychopaths will usually demonstrate a lot of inauthentic emotion, where they come across in the interaction as fake, cold, or just inauthentic, like we're seeing here. I'm not guilty. <laughs> Does that, does that include the time I stole a comic book when I was five years old? <laughs> the creeps kind of grew on me when he talked about feeling for the family. The parents of these, of these girls are, are fairly decent people, I don't know. And I really feel for them because apparently they suffered some uh, an incredible tragedy in their lives. The loss of a loved one is, is probably, probably the most extreme kind of loss you can suffer in, in this life. And I say I, I feel as much for them as anybody can, uh, not having gone through that myself. The judge found you guilty of uh, second-degree kidnapping. You never showed any emotion. Yeah. And for somebody who believes he is so innocent, why was there no emotion? He was an arrogant basically. And that's the way he came across on the stand. At the trial, Durant picked out Bundy as her abductor. Ted Bundy was convicted with kidnapping Carol Durant. I've always mused over just how I should behave. I just behave the way I feel is right. If you noticed, he first defended himself, and then now watch what he does. And I'm showing emotion right now because inside I'm mad. When he's reminded by the interviewer, then he's like, oh, emotion. Oh, I should show that I'm kind of sad and mad. Oh, that's what I should do. And then he goes and tries to show it. And I'm like, inside, I'm mad. Because inside, I'm mad. And he gives a little bit of a sniffle. Uh, I showed no emotion. I felt emotion. Believe me. Now. <laughs> do you think that's authentic emotion? Ted Bundy goes from sadness to laughing like that. I showed no emotion. I felt emotion. Believe me. Now. <laughs> Changing the emotion that quickly indicates that the emotion is inauthentic. Very reminiscent of Chris Watts. Remember this part of the interrogation? And you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. No. Not one. I like these shirts a lot. Help me understand that because I don't get it. You're, these are your baby girls. Oh. And you have not shed one tear over them not being around. Chris, I, 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 I lose my four-year-old in the store for 10 seconds, and I start to go panic. Panic. I have not seen any of that from you at all. Help me understand I, that. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. You get yeah, no, that's weird. Is I, I, that I, weird? I, 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 no. Look, I, I just had a little sniffle, and now I'm emotional now. That's weird. Is I, I, that I, weird? I, 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 no depersonalize another person and view them as just an object. Now when Jeffrey Dimer talks about this, see what you think of his body language. I don't know how to express the regret, the sorrow. Um, that I feel for what I've done for their for their sons. Uh, 
I can't find the right words. Jeffrey Dimer is talking about this with inauthentic emotion, cold emotion, and he's talking about his horrific crimes like he just stole a pack of chewing gum from a convenience store. Really no emotion in his face, just completely blank. I don't know if many of you know what he did, but it also involves, um, yeah, eating. Okay, we'll leave it at that because we can't talk about this in detail. Otherwise, we get in trouble. What he did and the way he did it and everything else is just mind-blowing and just horrific and disgusting. Disgusting. And he's talking about it like, oh, well, there's nothing words can't express of how sorry I am. I can't find the right words. He talked about everything in such a matter-of-fact manner. It's, it's almost like, well, everybody does this. Are you appealing these because you say you're innocent? You didn't kill 13 people? That is correct. Have you ever physically harmed anyone? Ever physically harmed anyone? No. No. You totally believe you're innocent. Mm -hmm. You don't change. You stay Ted Bundy 24 hours a day. <laughs> well, uh, gee, that name sounds funny. You know, I hear Ted Bundy in so many different contexts. The interviewer is saying, the Ted Bundy we see here, the smiley, charming, nice Ted Bundy we see here that wouldn't possibly be able to hurt anybody. That's what the interviewer is talking about. But what Ted is thinking about is all the different sides of Ted Bundy, different contexts, as he put it. That name sounds funny, you know, I hear Ted Bundy in so many different contexts. As he was smiling, looking down, and then rubbing the side of his face in soothing self-comfort. We go from Ted Bundy to uh, Chris Watts' idiotic deception. Watch. Don't let this continue any longer, please. I'm not trying to make anything continue. I want them back home, like... But you know they're not coming back home. You know that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. I, I hope they come back home. He dressed like a clown to make children laugh. He was John Wayne Gacy. Thirteen years ago, he told the police how he murdered his victims. Now he's telling me he never did. Now see if you can spot anything a little bit odd on how John Wayne Gacy says this. Uh, Buck bitch is not one that I killed, so I don't know nothing about it. He accidentally admitted that he killed others, but is not going to admit this one. There's not one that I killed, so I don't know nothing about him. But that goes completely against his new defense of, I didn't do any of it. It's just a complete misunderstanding. Again, I get so many people telling me, you can't pick out their body language. You can't pick out a psychopathic liar. Yes, sometimes they may be a little bit more difficult to pick out because they're just a little bit more calm about everything. But overall, if you watch an entire interview with a psychopath, you can pretty much pick out a lot of their deception. Because I, I, don't, I don't believe in hitting hitting children. Believe it or not, for the last 12 years, I've studied these photos of the victims. When you look over at the, the photos, I have no recollection of any of them. Never met them. Behind the scenes, John Wayne Gacy was hard at work trying to find out if he knew any of the people. For 12 years it took. And then finally, now he's able to come out and say that, no, I, I don't think I've met any of them. <laughs> and not only haven't met any of them, but haven't done anything bad. <laughs> It took him 12 years to figure that out. I'm looking at you and you're the bad guys because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not telling the truth and you guys are walking around issuing statements that I lied here, I lied there. But it's the same problem because you're making me out to be a huge liar and, and this, this is a problem. Now, the instructions from Manson were changing. One of the things that Charlie always promoted about himself was, I don't lie. And all of a sudden, he was asking every one of us to lie on a daily basis about something. Oh, say this, say that. And we're going, but I didn't do that. And it was like, you lie, a god lies. In my whole life, I've burglarized the grocery store, stole some nickels and dimes, busted open a stamp machine, stole a few automobiles, and cashed a couple checks. I'm a petty car thief. Are you uh, guilty of any murders? Are you guilty of plotting any murders? I killed a chicken once. Any and human being? No, no. I never told anybody to do anything other than what they wanted to do. Oh, Charlie's just absolutely lying. There wasn't one thing done that was even allowed to be done without his expressed permission. Are you remorseful? Not at all. Why? Why would I be? Do you think you did the right thing of by course, killing this guy? Definitely. Do you believe him? Do you think he really was a snitch? Oops, if he wasn't. If you had that moment to live over again. I'd have kept him alive a week. Right, and I regret not killing my other victim. 
I should have killed him too. I just didn't have time. I had to go somewhere. Will you kill again? If the opportunity arises, I hope so. As Gacy talked, the officers looked for some feeling in him, some emotion about what he had done. There was none. In the confession room, I most clearly remember that uh, there was no remorse. Very, very cold about it. You're in the, the ranks of Charlie Manson, Ted Bundy. You claim you didn't commit these murders. Why on earth would you have hurt those people? Why did you kill those people? Uh, no comments. No comments. Now watch this part of the interview with Jeffrey Dimer and see what you think. If a person doesn't think that there, there is a God to be accountable to, then, then what's, what's the point of, of trying to uh, modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges? That, that's how I thought anyway. Very psychopathic, right? Lacking empathy and remorse. Normally people don't need to have religion as a reason to not hurt people. It's because we don't want to hurt somebody else because we wouldn't want to be hurt. So why would we want to hurt somebody else? That's what we would feel. But for a psychopath, they're looking at it as, well, what's in it for me not to hurt somebody? For Jeffrey Dimer now, religion gives him a reason not to hurt somebody because he needs the motivation of religion of, oh, if I'm good on this planet, then I get to go to heaven as a reason to be good and not hurt people. Now here, when we watch Ted Bundy, see if you think he's actually remorseful and has empathy for what he did. This is the day before he's executed. Watch. Are you thinking about all those victims out there and their families well, who are so wounded, you know, years later, their lives have not returned to normal. They will never return to normal. Absolutely. Are, are you carrying that load, that weight? Is the remorse there? <sighs> Through God's help, I have been able to come to the point where I... Much too late, but ne better late than never, feel the hurt and the pain that I am responsible for. Asking Ted Bundy to feel remorse and empathy is kind of like asking an ostrich to fly. They may look like they can fly, kind of like it looks like Ted Bundy is just an average human that is capable, just like any of us, to feel remorse and empathy. But no, he's not capable of feeling real remorse and empathy. He may be able to say it, <laughs> clearly, but he's not authentic. You can see it in his body language. Much too late, but ne better late than never, feel the hurt and the pain that I am responsible for. At one point when he's saying it, it almost looks like he's laughing. Feel the hurt and the pain that I am responsible for. It's just words, and that's what we'll notice when psychopaths say they're sorry or pretend that they have emotion or pretend that they have remorse or anything like that. It's just words. You don't really see it in their face. So in turn, it just makes all of us feel like they're not authentic and they're not sincere because they're just not capable of feeling those emotions. You write in that in all your conversations with Charles Manson, he never expressed remorse. Well, have you seen any today? I mean, he, perhaps he believes totally in his own mind that See, he's not you guilty. You guys got this stuff in your head that I've murdered somebody. In his warped, immoral worldview, behaving as he has done, killing all these people is something that he should be proud of not ashamed of. And that's why he's so keen to help the police. And that's why he's so keen to talk about these things at court, not because he's ashamed, but because he's proud. And we've noticed that in a lot of the interrogation breakdowns that we've done. For example, Russell Williams. It's uh, pretty wide open now. Yeah. What do you want to know? When he's talking about it, how did he talk about it? We can't show it, but, um, but how did he talk about it? Yeah, he was just talking about it as just Matter of fact, the big motivation for these sickos to finally reveal what they did is pride. A good analogy here is kind of like a magician feeling like he gets to finally tell his secrets of how he did the trick. Everyone is just perplexed, scratching their heads, and they're like, how did you do the trick? And the magician's like, okay, finally, I'll tell you. Here's how it's done, and this is what I did. That's what these sickos kind of equate it to because they're incapable of feeling the damage that they have actually caused. They don't feel the pain of some else. They're just like, well, I did this. It's against the law and I got caught. So there you go. I've always felt that people talk about psychopaths very far removed, don't really even understand what exactly a psychopath is or how they act or what their body language is or anything. The whole idea in this video is to pull all the evidence together so you can easily see their psychopathic body language, behavior, and tendencies so you can more easily identify a psychopath in your own life. If this video gets over 10,000 likes, we'll make a moron video on my more channel on body language tips and tricks to identify 
identify a psychopath. So if you're not already subscribed, you may want to do that so you don't miss out on that likely future video. Now in the comments, what famous person do you think is a psychopath? Let everyone know in the comments below. I'm not a famous person, so don't put my name in the comments. I can just see my haters right now. Derek Van Shake. <laughs> if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button now because we can only miss out on new body language and investigative videos. Let him shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top. <laughs> oh. Now I can film a moron right here. Let's go! <laughs>